falling ecchymosis, deformity, that kind of stuff. One of the things that you can get with uh, kids fracture is that if you get an epiphyseal fracture, then you can get growth disturbance. So if you will close down the lateral side, you continue, and so you start getting um, a, uh, a valgus deformity of the elbow. Um, the other thing you can do is if um, you end up uh, closing down the medial side, which is the more common place to get a supracondylar fracture, that closes down, and then you get overgrowth of the lateral side, and it's called a gunstock deformity. So when you have them <laughs> stand up, instead of their carrying angle, which is usually about 10 degrees in guys and about 15 degrees in girls, um, it'll be less. I mean, I can't do that, but again, it starts going down this way, or they're out this way if they close down the lateral side. So that's some of the deformities that you, you see. You said this degree should be like 10 or 15? Yeah, if you go straight down here and down there, mm. that should be about Yours is normal. Yeah. I so, can't see myself. So women, why do women have a larger carrying angle than guys do? Because they're hips? awesome. Because hips are wide. Because <laughs> otherwise you'd whack your hips. It's anatomic. So, so. I do. How was that also? So, <laughs> anterior elbow. So biceps is right. So I'm ready to flex and find your biceps. Goes right down the middle, goes into your radial tuberosity. <laughs> I, I can't feel my guys. So. <laughs> Shut up. You're on a video. Say that. something. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> posteriorly, your lecranon process is the knob. Your triceps tendon goes into the knob, and then your triceps brachii is the muscular part of that. So, um, one of the things I think. Um, that Dr. Gomez talked about this. So if your elbow is in full extension, you should be able to draw a line between your olecranon process, your medial epicondyle, and your lateral epicondyle should be a straight line. If you bend at 90 degree angle, it should be an isosceles triangle, which means that the distance from your olecranon to the medial <laughs> is the same to olecranon to the lateral. We are medical students. <laughs> no. My daughter's in physics, so it's all, it's all good. Um, so on the medial elbow, um, your medial epicondyle is the big knob um, on the inside. And then a little bit superior to the knob is where the growth plate is. A little down from the knob is where the ulnar collateral ligament is. On the medial epicondyle, that's where your flexors and your pronators go in. So again, if you flex and you pronate, those are all the muscles that go right in through there. So, um, on the lateral side, the lateral epicondyle is where um, uh, all of your extensors and your supinators go. So. Um, right in through there. So again, you can kind of do one of these. There it is. So, um, so people with tennis elbow, lateral side hurts when they extend. Golfer's elbow hurts when they flex and pronate when they're hitting the golf ball. So we talked about radial nerve, ulnar nerve, pulse, uh, pulses, sensation, um, reflexes. So range of motion in the elbow, flexion extension mainly happens from <coughs> your olecranon with the olecranon fossa. Most of your supination and pronation come from your radio capitellar joint. So you should be able to get to full extension and get up to full flexion, which is about 145, 150 degrees. And then you should n normally have 90 degrees of supination and 90 degrees of pronation. So we will not be tested on that one either. Wrist, extension, flexion. And the reason why we're doing that is, remember, we're talking about the elbow. Oftentimes, it's a problem with the wrist. Um, that's why you get it up through there. <coughs> so resisted elbow <coughs> flexion, extension, supination, pronation. So when I do um, supination and pronation, so that's where you shake the hand. You go this way. I'm going to go the other way. So that's. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. So he's pronating. So I'm giving him resisted pronation, then him going out that way. So shake their hands for these. Yep. You can test for uh, acromegaly too. <laughs> we just got to shake some of their hands. Though. Oh really? That's pretty cool. Like yeah. Smaller your hands. It was <laughs> huge. Yeah. It's like a pillow. Yeah. Oh. It's so nice. Do I have? <laughs>
<laughs> so, you know, the other, okay, so, so here's the tangential thing. So if you're actually like in uh, like India or somewhere, one of the things that they're doing when they shake people's hand is they also give them one of these the rest, and yeah. check in for owner nerve where they can have leprosy. Oh, <gasps> oh, <gasps> crazy. So their owner nerve is like, is that painful? Or hyper oh. You can feel that so quickly? That's what they say. What uh, is this? In the, in like wait, 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 if they have leprosy, don't you not want to be like touching them that much? Cover it and then run away from you. Wait, See you later. So you feel it for the back of the elbow? Yeah. So right where the cubital tunnel is. Yeah. So if you we push, push it, it there's no. And there's no. Just you just. Hi, how are you? Oh, don't let me move your hand or anything. When does leprosy become contagious? When you touch their ulnar nerve. When you touch their ulnar nerve, you shake their hand. They wait, now it's too late. Okay, I'm not infectious. What's the incubation period? So, varus test. Um, so, you bring them into extension. And again, varus usually doesn't have much problem. So, again, it's like checking the LCL in the, um, in the, uh, in the knee. And then you bring them up to 30 degrees and do the same thing. The UCL, <coughs> you always have to do that at 30 degrees because otherwise the electronon is in the electronon fossa and you're checking there to see one I doesn't see hurt. This. And it should open a little bit. And actually it's better to have them in the long axis of their body here like this. Because when you do it that way, then you can control how much shoulder. external rotation they have in the shoulder. If you do it out here, uh -huh. it can move a lot more. So that's so why you bring them out to That's here. another varus or that's a UCL specific? So this is, it's just, when you check the UCL, you should do it in, um, in the plane of their body to check the UCL. But checking the UCL is part of the varus test, right? Yeah, right. right? Instability okay. of the valves. Oh, the valves. Yeah, the valves. Yeah, the valves. Yeah, the valves. For various yeah, that. Oh. Like it's head, it's just that. 30 degrees. 30 and I will control. Double's going on. It's usually just knees in. Blue. Yeah. This is actually. So, and then we do. Yes. <laughs> okay, the milking maneuver. Did Dr. Gomez go over that one? I don't know. Sounds like they are probably. You start in full extension and you grab their thumb like you're milking a cow. <laughs> and you give them a little bit of algus. And nothing hurts here because your electronon is in the electronon fossa. And as you come up to here, they go, ow, 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 ow. And then they get up to here, and it's not, and yeah, not a big deal. So you get a painful arc from about 15 degrees up to about 90 degrees. Wait, what's the problem with that? And That's a partial this, right? tear of the ulnar collateral ligament. Uh, I don't get it. What? So it's you, weird. You, the angle's weird. you grab and pull back this way, so it's like you're giving them a valgus the whole time. Okay. And down here, it doesn't hurt. And then it hurts. Ow, 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 ow. Is <laughs> <laughs> your thumb or is <laughs> Is there like a radio collateral ligament? There is a radio okay. collateral ligament, but that doesn't usually get it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that it? Stand on this side of him. And then what? Go, 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 over, go over here. No, you're yeah. fine. No, he's in the right place. Flex. So, yeah. and then you just bring it up. <coughs> and while you're kind of torquing it back. Oh, this oh way. torquing it back more? That's why you're grabbing his thumb. <laughs> well, this, this is famous. I thought it was to just a lesson. Yeah. It's really old since the game. You messed up so much. This stimulates <laughs> prolactin. <laughs> <That's what we're laughs> Did you guys see the, the lady with a nipple on the bottom of her face? Yes. I saw that weird poster. Sure. <laughs> All being recorded, guys. <laughs> Be recorded. Oh, great. Right. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm lying. Um, then the median nerve, remember, it goes through the two heads of the pronator teres. Mm -hmm. So if you do the handshake where they're pronating over, and you fire it, and then they start getting numb and thinking that's the resisted pronation test. So you just do this, and then just aren't you already doing resisted pronation? Yeah. You can put that together. You with put it in and hold it that way. Push in. Oh, sorry. Oh, and you, uh, you and then just hold, just hold them. Okay. And then that's where the pronator oh, carries. Oh, cool. Well, it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's giving you. No, I like, guys, and it felt like it was. Can you show where it is again? Really Actually, hot. just can you. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like. <laughs> it burn you? Yeah, it felt okay, like so your just finger like in the was really hot. Can you rotate it so I can see where he's going? <laughs> 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 okay. 
Is our hit actually? Oh, no, 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 no. It is nerd. No. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, no. Hands I didn't pull Mr. Miyagi or whatever. So. Fire. Fire. You like push it and you try to pull it. So the radial nerve. A long finger extension pushing down here like this, and you that'll actually reproduce some pain on the back side. What was that one? The radial nerve uh, is for the long finger extension <laughs> test. And then again, it'll reproduce your pain back and feet back side. The radial nerve in general is not very commonly um, compressed, but the ulnar nerve and the median definitely are. Was the ulnar just the same thing as the handshake you said earlier? I mean, you check it though with the, or yeah. you just, you have them do that it's and then you just. It's the canal of the ulnar nerve. So you're resisting the flexion at, at the pip yep. right here? Okay. There's like, the ulnar goes here. The wrist is using extension at the foot. Oh, no, ulnar's going to be we right? did this yeah. thing and pressed yeah. here, that was yeah. also That was the pronator nerve. <laughs> you think you had a pronator teres. <laughs> because the nerve goes between those two edges. Is it right in the middle or is it more to the side? <laughs> so it's it's like right here. For the median. How come you don't have to do the handshake thing for the median nerve? I mean, sorry, for the ulnar nerve, only for the median nerve. Because it goes behind in the cubital tunnel, so it doesn't get in the So, ulnar? So you're actually bending there? Arm uh, at the same time. <laughs> I'm not sure how to do that. Which one? Never had anybody say it was a hot nerve. It felt like your finger was like it was hot, burning me. And is that, but that's yeah, yeah. not part of the test, right? That's normal, You're just right? <laughs> <laughs> no, not the burning, but just you pressing down here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is part of the test. Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah, just is? like so when you're shaking their hand. What you, I did, you push the leprosy. So you, you give so them you some resisted pronation, and then you push right on the pronator carries. I won. But okay, so you do it sort of at the same time. You check the yeah. ulnar, and then you check the median. So, we'll do it again. Push over, and then right in there. That's ulnar. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's median. That's median. Ulnar nerve is back. Funny bone. <laughs> <laughs> I think I sensitized you. Yeah. <laughs>